Welcome everyone to the School of Public Health celebration of Brown University's 253rd commencement. Welcome to the students, alumni, faculty, and staff members gathered together. Virtually, of course. Welcome to the friends and families of those graduating this weekend. And welcome especially to the School of Public Health's graduates of the class of 2021. I'm Melissa Clark, Associate Dean for Academic Affairs and your MC today for our virtual celebration. I want to start by saying congratulations to our graduates. For our celebration, which will include both live and pre-recorded segments, we will honor our graduating undergraduate concentrators in public health and in statistics and our graduating master's and doctoral students. We will be acknowledging several student awards and you will hear from student representatives from each class selected by their peers to say a few words about their Brown experiences in public health. Throughout the celebration, feel free to post your congratulations to your students in the chat function. But first, before we do that, you will hear from our Dean and then from our very special guest, Vice Admiral Vivek Murthy, Surgeon General of the United States. Now, it is my honor to introduce the third Dean of the Brown University School of Public Health, Dr. Ashish K. Jha. So good evening, everybody, and congratulations, huge congratulations to the graduating class of public health scholars and advocates and researchers and educators who are going to transform public health in America and around the world. Before I talk to you more about your journey and what you're gonna encounter, let me take a moment to thank the support network, the family and the friends, all of the people who have enabled this wonderful moment. So huge thanks to all of you. And let me also take a moment to give a big thanks to the faculty and staff mm -hmm. who in the last two years, and especially in the last 16 months, have persevered under extraordinary circumstances to enable these uh, next generation of public health leaders uh, get through their training, uh, get the skills they need, get the, uh, get the education they need to go out and change the world. So thank you to all the staff and faculty as well. Um, I do wanna take a moment to acknowledge what this class has gone through. You know, I remember thinking last year uh, as that class was graduating, what a difficult time they had had the last three months of their, of their time at Brown um, as I was watching the graduation from a, uh, and, and thinking about the graduation from a distance. Uh, I was thinking about what a difficult time they had had, three, la their last three months uh, having to do things virtually. You all have had to, to go through much of your education, a majority of your education, depending on which program you're in, but certainly for the master's students, a majority of your education virtually. Um, what you have learned is how to not just persist, not just how to survive, but how to thrive under extremely difficult circumstances. And while none of us wish this on anybody, I think it will, it will in very much hold you instead and, 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 and give you all that much more strength and, and, and ability as you go out in the world and tackle the big challenges of public health. And I wanna just take a couple of minutes to talk about the big challenges of public health. You know, when you started your time at the school, you probably got lots of questions from people asking, what is public health? And why are you going into public health? I, my sense is a lot of you uh, get that question a lot less frequently now. The world has discovered, unfortunately, during this moment, uh, what public health is. And more importantly, what happens if we do not uh, pay attention to public health in a way that we need to. Now, while none of us wish that we had to go through this time period, one of the things that happens with pandemics is it opens up opportunities with any health crisis, is it opens up opportunities for re-envisioning the world and reimagining what is possible. And you are all graduating into a world that is ready and hungry for public health leadership. And I could not be more excited. As difficult as the last year and a half has been, uh, I'm thrilled that you are the ones who are gonna go out and set the pace and set the course for what public health will look like in the decade to come. The challenges of public health in our times are extraordinary, as you know. I mean, obviously everybody knows about the pandemic, uh, infectious disease outbreaks are gonna continue, but there are really huge challenges that we have to tackle. 
climate change is going to end up becoming the biggest public health challenge of the next decade and, and of, the, of the next half century. And while that's an energy problem, we in the public health world will have to remind people that this is not about temperature changes and sea level rises as important as they are. This is about people's health. This is about how climate change uh, forces migration, how uh, heat waves affect uh, kids with asthma and older people with strokes, how disease vectors change their locations and spread in the context of climate change. There's so many ways in which climate change is going to affect all of our health. And you have to go out there and remind the world and help create the solutions for protecting people's health as the climate changes. The other major issue that we're all going to be working on and dealing with in the, in the de years and decades to come that has been revealed so abruptly in this pandemic is the longstanding systemic racism and the ways it shapes public health in America and around the world. And this is another area where as awful as the last year and a half has been, my sense is, my hope is that there is a moment here to re-envision and re-examine issues that have felt too intransi intransient, too difficult to move. I think the country is ready for change on racism, on confronting racism, and the public health effects of that racism. And we saw that just a couple of months ago when the CDC declared racism a public health challenge. And my hope is that you will be that first generation of public health leaders that will call out the public health effects of these deep systemic inequalities in our country and help Americans understand that if we do not address it, we as a country, we as a people cannot be healthy. So there are lots of challenges ahead of us. Uh, tonight is a night to celebrate all of the great accomplishments of the last two years. And when, I, when we were thinking about who would we want to inspire us, to lead us, to help us think about uh, where to go, obviously there was really no one that anybody, as a group of us got together, there was no one we wanted more to have us join, uh, have join us and help us uh, celebrate the, this evening than the 21st Surgeon General of the United States, the Vice Admiral Vivek Murthy. Um, I could talk a lot about Vivek. I've known Dr. Murthy for, for some time. He's been an extraordinary leader in his last go around as Surgeon General under President Obama. Um, he tackled and led the nation as our nation's doctor on so many critical issues from Ebola to Zika, to the opioid epidemic, to the loneliness crisis. And when President Biden came in, um, we knew that at this moment, especially over the last year, one of the biggest challenges had been clear, crystal clear, honest, straightforward scientific guidance uh, from our government leaders. That had, been, that had been lacking. It was a major reason why we as a country struggled in this pandemic. And so all of us, hoped and crossed our fingers and toes uh, that President Biden, or at that moment, President-elect Biden, would ask uh, Dr. Murthy to once again take on the helm. In the middle of the biggest public health crisis in a century, we needed a nation's doctor who was trustworthy, uh, who would speak to us plainly, who would talk to the nation about the challenges ahead of us and what we needed to do. And so I think all there was great celebration in the public health and medicine community uh, when Dr. Murthy was nominated and when Dr. Murthy um, was officially confirmed by the Senate as the 21st Surgeon General of the United States. And again, I could not be more thrilled uh, than to have uh, the Vice Admiral Vivek Murthy tonight. Uh, so Vivek, thank you again for being here. Absolutely thrilling to have you as our uh, commencement speaker. And I turn it over to you. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dean Jha. I really appreciate that kind introduction, um, your, our many years of friendship, and also really appreciate your outstanding leadership during this time of crisis. Uh, you've been one of those extraordinarily important voices, helping the country understand more about COVID over the last year, and really grateful for everything you've done. To the esteemed faculty who are joining us today, to the staff of the Brown University School of Public Health, to the proud family and friends uh, who are watching today, and most importantly, to the graduates of the class of 2021, I just want to say what an honor it is to be with you, especially at a moment like this. I know many of you didn't expect that your education in public health would be disrupted by, of all things, a public health emergency. But in the midst of this suffering our world has endured, this gathering, your graduation, is a testament to all the reasons 
we have to be hopeful about the future. Now, when you entered your programs, I'm guessing that there were some relatives, some friends who said, oh, a degree in public health. So what are you going to do with that? Because when things are going well, you see, public health is an invisible field. Before 2020, many people didn't know what public health officials actually did. Because we don't think of all the times that we didn't get food poisoning from the groceries we brought home at the restaurants we dine at. We don't notice when an infectious disease outbreak is prevented from happening in the first place. But I think it's safe to say that those friends and relatives understand now what public health is. After more than a year of the COVID-19 pandemic, never have more people understood terms like herd immunity or are not values or epidemiology. And if you happen to be on Twitter, you also know that the field has expanded dramatically with millions of armchair epidemiologists who are passionately debating infection curves and predicting the next wave. The truth is you are now seen in a way that public health professionals have never been seen before. And that comes with a new level of influence and a new level of challenge. Because at the same time that more people have begun to see public health experts as trusted, indispensable leaders, there are others who have made our colleagues the targets of their frustration. Public health leaders have been flooded with angry calls and protests at their homes. Their offices have been tagged with graffiti and pelted with rocks. And just as the stress of being a public health official ramps up, so do the number of an intensity really of crises that we face. From COVID-19 to the opi opioid epidemic, to our growing mental health crisis. Now with so many crises to manage amid so much scrutiny and strain, how do all of us stay true to the core mission of public health? And how do we sustain ourselves in the process? Well, today I'd like to suggest that we do so by anchoring ourselves to three sacred commitments. Commitments that define the highest ideals of public health. Commitments that will guide us through the challenges ahead. The first commitment is to stand up for the value of every life. Now, this may sound obvious at first, but we all know that we live in a world where countless voices tell people every day that they are not valued because of the color of their skin or the people they love or the God they worship or the sound of their accent. But our responsibility as public health leaders is to affirm the value of every life especially in the face of such inequities, to declare the dignity of Black lives, to insist that we must stop hate against Asian Americans, to look out for children who don't have food on the table or a safe way to get to school, and to do so even when it's hard, bureaucratic, or comes at a high cost. I say this knowing firsthand that speaking out can be very costly. People will accuse you of being political, when you see the color of someone's skin is tied to shorter life expectancy, and you say that racial injustice is a public health issue, people will say you're being political. When you see headline after headline about shootings in schools and grocery stores, and you say gun violence is a public health issue, people will say you're being political. And when you look at rising tides and thick smoke from wildfires, and you say climate change poses an imminent threat to our health, people will say you are being political. But I'm here to tell you that when speaking the truth is disparaged as political, it is our responsibility to do it anyway, because that's what it takes to stand up for the value of every human life. Now, standing up for every human life is not exactly a small task. In fact, it requires us to be engaged in every community, every industry, every sector of society. So the second commitment I want to share with you is simple. Don't stay in your lane. Because public health doesn't exist in a silo. It's the foundation of everything else in society. You know, as a physician, I saw young men and women who were depressed because they wanted to live fulfilling lives, but they went to schools and measured their worth with test scores and acceptance letters. I treated patients with diabetes who knew it would be good for them to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables, but they couldn't because the nearest grocery store was an hour long bus ride away. I cared for elderly people who had been instructed to walk more to improve their heart health, but it wasn't safe to walk in their neighborhoods. All of them knew that they were stuck, 
And as their doctor, so was I. But years later, when I became Surgeon General, I got to witness how public health could strengthen the fundamental building blocks of health in our communities. I met psychologists who brought social emotional learning programs into schools where kids came to understand their emotions and recognize their self-worth. I encountered advocates who brought mobile farmers markets and curbside gardens to communities in food deserts. And I got to know doctors who built a movement around the country for group walks that brings neighbors together to exercise and build community. If these people had stayed within the traditionally understood boundaries of public health, they may have only spoken up in conversations about immunizations or food safety. But today, communities are stronger and healthier because public health leaders had the courage to get out of their lane and imagine a world where public health shaped our schools and our streets. At the end of the day, it's true that you are scientists, investigators, and analysts. But the work of public health isn't just technical. At its best, public health is a profession of imagination. It's creative. And you are in a position to empower others to imagine and create a world where everyone can thrive in their homes, classrooms, workplaces, and neighborhoods. Now, you, you may think to yourself, gosh, I'm not wanted in those other places. But I can tell you that you are not only wanted, but you are needed. Because there are teachers all over this country who look at kids who are restless and lonely after a year of boarded up playgrounds, and they wanna know what schools can do to support their social and physical well being. There are employers who recognize the mental health struggles of their staff and want to know what they can do to help support them and pursue wellness. There are mayors who are looking at maps of green spaces and zoning and want to ensure that their constituents have safe spaces to walk and run and host a neighborhood picnic. All of these people are waiting for someone like you to validate their concerns, to guide their understanding and to be a partner in creating better health. Standing up for the value of every life, strengthening the foundation of all sectors of society, these are no small tasks. And some of you might be wondering, how am I, just one person, going to sustain this work? Well, the answer is, you're not, at least not alone, because none of us can do this work alone, which is why the third commitment I'm asking you to anchor to is this, put people first, at work, at home, and in all parts of your life. I learned this lesson the hard way. In 2017, my life changed overnight when my first tenure as Surgeon General ended abruptly. I was suddenly separated from the work and the colleagues I loved, and I found myself with no earthly idea what I would do next. Now, I wish I could tell you that I recuperated after a few weeks and moved on to the next phase of my life, but it wasn't that neat. Instead, I spent months struggling to find direction. In addition to losing my community at work, I had also allowed my trusted family of friends to drift apart when I was in the job. It wasn't intentional, but rather the cumulative effect of many small moments of putting work ahead of the people I loved. I wanted to call them. I was ashamed to ask for support when I hadn't exactly been a supportive friend to them over the past two and a half years. Feeling distant from the ties that had nourished me for so long led to a deep sense of loneliness and loneliness paved the way for self-doubt and shame as I came to question my self-worth. It took me more than a year to find healing, but it ultimately came not from professional pursuits or public recognition, but from people. My wife, Alice, stuck with me through those tough times and did what best friends do, reminded me that I still had the capacity to give and receive love. My mother, father, and sister came to visit and called me every day to let me know that my worth was based not on my job title, but on merely having the title of human being. My friends, Dave and Sonny, formed a pact with me that we would together create a Moai, an Okinawan tradition where a small group of people make an explicit commitment to look out for one another, no matter what life may bring. Though we had known each other for years, we committed to video conferencing once a month 
and texting each other during moments of joy or worry when we needed advice. We also committed to be real with each other, to talk about the things friends don't talk about often enough, our fears, our dreams, our health, our finances, and our failures. Over time, I slowly healed. I began to laugh more and appreciate small moments of wonder. I began dreaming once again about what the future might hold. I healed because of the people in my life. At a moment where I felt like my soul had a tear in it, they patched me up with their acts of love. That is the power of human connection. It makes us whole, focuses us on what matters, reminds us of who we are, especially when we forget. And we will forget because the world around will keep telling us that our worth is dependent on how many papers we have published, how many times we're mentioned in the press, how fancy our job title is, or how many people work for us. But the truth is the world is full of people with all of these accomplishments who are profoundly unhappy. I want you to know right here and right now that the most important qualities you need to be a healer in society are the ones you had long before you began your degree in public health. Your ability to care deeply for others, to listen compassionately, and to lead with love. Despite what the world may tell you, that is enough. You are enough. You don't need to be someone else. It is the people that we love who will bring us back to this truth. That's why we must build a life that is centered around our relationships. It's why we must always remind ourselves where our worth lies and remind others of the same. Today, all of you are joining a sacred lineage of healers. Healers who for generations have sought to address the public health challenges of their era, from smallpox and yellow fever to polio and now COVID-19. But as society's newest leaders, the choice of what kind of society to build, the choice of how to lead starts with you. So choose to stand up for the value of every life. Choose to get out of your lane. Choose to put people first. I leave you today with a practice you can turn to during those moments of doubt that will inevitably surface during the years ahead. Take your right hand and place it gently over your heart and close your eyes. Take a deep breath and think about the people in your life who have supported you on your journey to this moment. Everyone from your favorite grade school teacher to the workers in your university cafeteria to your closest family and friends. Feel their love flowing through you, strengthening you, guiding you, and filling you with peace. And know that that love is always there for you, no matter what happens in the world, because it resides within you. Now, open your eyes. What you felt was the power of love. Love is the world's oldest medicine. Your ability to give and receive love is your greatest gift and your greatest power. It is what will sustain you on every step of the journey ahead. Thank you and congratulations to all the graduates of the class of 2021. Wow. Vivek, you have me speechless. That was wonderful. Um, thank you. Thank you for um, guiding us for uh, centering us, reminding us of both our, our values as well as um, a path forward on how to, how to affect change in the world. And I love, I, as, much as, the, um, as much as your remarks were, I'm so deeply heartfelt, I also just love the idea of don't stay in your lane. Uh, it's such an incredibly powerful notion of, of, of what public health can do. And of course, love is the most powerful force for healing, for bringing people together. 
uh, and really at the heart of what public health is all about. So I am deeply grateful for your taking time and joining us for guiding our students, but also our faculty and for all of us. And finally, for your leadership at this incredibly difficult moment for our country and for the world. Uh, I, I meant it when I said it, there is nobody else who I would rather have as our country's doctor. You really are uh, what we all aspire to. So Dr. Murthy, thank you very much for being here tonight. Thank you so much, Ashish. That means a great deal to me. And thank you for having me. All right, I now turn it over to our next video presentation. Cheers to the Brown School of Public Health class of 2021. This has been a year unlike any other. And you've proved your resilience in the face of unprecedented challenges. We as faculty are proud to have worked with such an intelligent, enthusiastic, and committed group of graduates. You've shown us your passion for public health, and we're delighted to honor you today. This pandemic has proved that public health is more important than ever. We are in awe of your willingness and eagerness to jump in and help. Many students worked extra hours at local community groups, the Rhode Island Department of Health, or other organizations to help in the pandemic while continuing your studies. All of our graduates have always had a public health impact, but this graduating class has had a large and immediate public health impact even prior to graduating. Moving to online learning was a challenge, but you proved your ability to be flexible and creative when faced with so much uncertainty. You were committed to making the most of your learning opportunities. You worked independently, you stayed engaged, you didn't complain, you pushed forward. We hope as you move onward becoming professionals in the field, you'll keep this tenacious energy and spirit. At its heart, public health is about service. You have dedicated your work to improving the lives of Rhode Islanders and people across the country and around the world. You've inspired us to become better public servants ourselves. Congratulations to the class of 2021. Congratulations to the class of 2021. Congratulations again. You are the best. It is now my pleasure to introduce our student speakers who were selected by their peers to address you today with their reflections. First is Dhruv Gar, AB Public Health. Thank you, Dr. Clark. Um, it's an honor to be speaking here uh, along such esteemed guests and to represent the class of 2021. Thank you, Vice Admiral Murthy and Dean Jaw for your remarks already and all the friends, families and supporters here tonight. Before I get started, I want to thank, on behalf of the undergraduate class of 2021, all of the incredible staff and faculty at the School of Public Health. You have been our teachers, our supporters, our mentors, and our guides as we learn this field, and we are grateful for all of you. I also want to thank all the other incredible undergrads I'm graduating with, from the first day of introduction to public health to our last public health research day. It has been an honor to learn and grow along each of you. I know that I personally am better off for having shared the classroom with all of you. I also personally want to thank the faculty, staff and students, both past and present of the People, Place and Health Collective here at the School of Public Health. You all have always inspired and challenged me to redefine public health for myself and to pursue the health of all people with deep passion. You have taught me more than any class I could ever take at Brown. Since the time when I first came to Brown four years ago, the world and public health have both changed a lot. We are still in the midst of the COVID-19 crisis and public health is now at the forefront of people's everyday lives. We have had to work incredibly hard to keep each other safe during this emergency. We have had to take quick, decisive, and thoughtful actions. For all of us, and some certainly more than others, it has been extremely hard. Sometime, hopefully soon, we will together bring this COVID-19 emergency to an end. For over a year now, people, including me, have been looking forward to the day where we return back to normal. But as we return to the way things were, it's important to remember that just because things are part of the status quo doesn't prevent them 
from also being emergencies. As we return to normal, we return to many public health issues, which have endured before and during this pandemic. We return to an ever-growing overdose crisis, unchecked police violence, systemic racism, a looming eviction crisis, gun violence, climate change, the list goes on and on. There are so many issues that affect the people's health. Here at Brown, we've learned that public health means preserving the health of all people everywhere. It is our mandate as people who care about public health to act on them. To do that, I think we need to expand what it means to act. We are facing problems whose scope exceeds the tools we're traditionally uh, taught to use and whose solutions require us to be bigger, bolder, and more imaginative in our thinking. It is our job not only to figure out what those tools are, but vigorously advocate and organize for their enactment alongside and in solidarity with the communities most affected by them. During this pandemic, we have already done that. During this crisis, keeping people healthy has meant taking unprecedented actions in the name of public health. Yes, we have addressed this pandemic with uh, conventional tools like vaccines and health communication, but have also had to close economic activity, pay people to stay home and put a hold on evictions. In January of 2020, each of these actions would have been completely unthinkable for public health to call for. And yet we had to do them all and they worked. Each of these actions played a huge role in preserving the health of the people. And while these actions are not the solution for every crisis we face down the line, we must be imaginative in the same way. As we move towards a world without COVID-19, we cannot afford to let the health of the people slip from the forefront of people's minds. As we go back to normal, we must challenge ourselves to create a new normal, both without COVID, yes, but also without the other health emergencies we face. And public health has the mandate to do that, to stare in the face of old problems and hold ourselves accountable for coming up with new solutions. Right now, we're face to face with systemic problems and to address them, we need systemic action. As people who care about public health, we must do whatever it takes to dismantle old oppressive systems that threaten people's well-being and build newer, better ones ones that allow for the flourishing of healthy, caring, and beautiful communities. In my time at Brown, I've learned that this precisely is the role of public health. This pandemic has been extremely difficult, and I know people in this field have had to work harder than ever before to enact the changes we've needed to keep people safe. We must carry on and use the same creativity, the same imaginativeness and the same deep thought to face every single challenge that comes next. To all of my fellow graduates, both undergrad and grad students, this is the task that is ahead of us. So let's think bold, let's think big and let's think imaginatively about how to change the world around us to improve the health of all people. As we continue in this field together, I look forward to being part of this important and beautiful reimagination alongside each of you. Thank you again to the staff and faculty of the School of Public Health and to the friends and families and supporters who have helped us all get here. And congratulations to the undergraduates and all graduates of the class of 2021. This has been full of challenges, but we did it. And I'm honored to have shared my time at Brown with all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dhruv. Next is Kelsey Bala, MPH. Thank you, Dr. Clark, for that introduction. And Dhruv, that was incredible. Those are tough remarks to follow. Uh, my name is Kelsey Bala, and I am a Master of Public Health, soon to be graduate. I actually grew up in the neighborhood right around Brown. My parents came to the Providence area from West Africa, my mom from Cape Verde, and my dad from Senegal. 
And before I say anything, I need them to know how much I appreciate their bravery to move from not that far from the equator to bitter cold New England. Uh, but more importantly, I want to tell them how much I appreciate their sacrifices that brought me to this moment today. And I thank God for you. It is an absolute honor and privilege to address my fellow master's students this evening. Thank you to all of the faculty and staff and family members and friends who are in attendance tonight in support of these graduates. You should be incredibly proud of your loved one for receiving a master's degree in public health in the middle of a global health crisis. Now, I promise not to use the phrase in these unprecedented times, but honestly, what a time to be studying public health. In the fall of 2019, we entered our programs so very unaware of the severe need our neighborhoods, country, and globe would have for well-trained professionals in public health. Working toward our graduate degree during the COVID-19 pandemic, remotely for the most part, was far from the experience we thought we signed up for. We forced ourselves to be creative when we felt drained, to care for our communities while caring for our own families. And we forced ourselves to be resilient while we grieved the lives that were taken from us in our BIPOC communities, not only from COVID-19, but also from countless instances of injustice. This was not easy. And what may have exacerbated the struggle was that while we were pushing ourselves to soak up all of the information and insight from experts and our experts right here at home at Brown, all to make sure we were equipped to tackle this desperate need for public health guidance, the public and the media seemed to reject what we as a community had to say. All of a sudden, long lost relatives on Facebook claim to be experts in public health. While we were trying to communicate evidence-based research that we were learning pre-pandemic, and for some reason, it just was not trusted. But it is in this moment that this group of intelligent, dedicated masters of public health are desperately needed. In the void that exists for clear public health messaging, the world needs people like this cohort of graduates right now. People who are passionate about community health, health equity, and racial justice, who can show the world that science and public health can be trusted. Now, there will definitely be a time when we will serve without a title, work without a position, and labor without acknowledgement. But know that it is never in vain. When we retain the passion for this field, like I know this cohort has, the fruits of that labor will be more than evident. One of the greatest lessons that I will take away from our professors here in the School of Public Health is to be passionate about the communities we have the privilege of serving. Our professors are some of the most compassionate people I have ever met, and they have trained us to approach our work with the same humility and passion that they exude to keep communities healthy. And I cannot thank them enough for the way that they've trained this next generation of public health leaders. So to my cohort, I say, know that the work you are doing and will do is important. And with this new title of Master of Public Health, serve our communities with excellence. Congratulations, class of 2021, and thank you. Thank you, Kelsey. And finally, we will hear from Shekinah Basha Walters, PhD, Health Services Research. 
Thank you so much. Uh, what a powerful remark and uh, thoughts that have been shared by my colleagues, Drew and Kelsey. It's amazing to hear you all speak. Thank you, Dr. Clark. And greetings to our friends, family, faculty, staff members, and special guests. It is such an honor to speak with you all today. To my fellow classmates and some of my students, hey, we all made it. <laughs> and if I've learned anything from this one year alone, Alone, it would be that our educational journeys are so much bigger than us. I've heard time and time again that in order to succeed, you must know your why. All of the greatest mentors will tell you this. And you probably heard within your first semester here at Brown that when the nights get long and hard, your why will keep you going. And although I tend to agree with this idea, as a doctoral student and public health researcher, I've learned that it's the who behind what we do that's most important because our who is the beginning of our why. Knowing who we are and knowing who we care most about guides our why. It guides our values and it guides our success. If we really think about it, it guided every late night in the library our struggles with coding, writing, and reading, so much reading, and it guided us to these very virtual seats today. And perhaps your who is sitting and watching you this very moment, commenting in the chat, or maybe your who is in your heart and looking down from above. But I think we should also acknowledge that maybe we don't know our who personally. Your who may be in the numbers, the data, or the lines on the graph. For me, it's all three. Let's be honest, school has been tough. And for whatever reason, I've done it time and time again. But finally, with a PH, I am done with a capital D. <laughs> but I consider the adversity that I've faced as a Black woman to be all worth it when I think about those who I bring with me across the stage this weekend. The folks who raised me, those who will follow behind me, and those who benefit from my work. You see, my who doesn't stop at family and friends or the colleagues I've met here at Brown. My who includes the Black, Brown, LGBTQ, and other underrepresented students that will follow in the decades to come. I once heard someone say that almost anybody can accomplish almost anything if they work at it long enough, hard enough, and smart enough. Despite what it looks like on paper, we are not the only graduates sitting here today. We are the sum total of the graduates that we know best. The graduates that we call parents and grandparents. Those that we call little sisters and brothers, cousins, nieces and nephews. Who we are as contributors to society is connected to who we are as children, partners, friends, leaders, thinkers and innovators. And no matter where we go next, we need to take all of who we are with us because the who behind what we do is the beginning of our why. And it will keep our fire shining bright. And together we know that we can achieve more. So in closing, I want you to do this with me. I want you to center yourself, ground yourself and close your eyes. I want you to picture yourself as a rushing wave of water. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter what sort of crack or crevice may exist. It may be a really small window of opportunity, but water makes its way in. So moving forward from today, I want you to think of yourself as water, that you can make room where there seems to be no room, where people tell you and boundaries and barriers and structures and systems and norms and white supremacy tells you that you can't exist, that your work can't exist, you can exist there because you're like water and you can do whatever you want to do as long as you bring all of who you are to the table and every form and every state that you exist. Take on your next career like a rushing wave. Don't let anything stop you. Don't let anything hold you back. Because after all, we are the graduates who weathered a whole pandemic. So congratulations to the future of public health because the graduates of 2021 are coming. Congratulations.
Thank you, Shekinah. Wow, what amazing students we have. We will now honor the winners of the 2021 Public Health Student Excellence Awards. These awards are highly competitive and the recipients were selected from a pool of outstanding candidates. Let's watch the video. And now it is my pleasure to announce our student awards and our inaugural alumni award. First, the undergraduate awards. The award for academic excellence in public health recognizes a graduating public health senior who has demonstrated exemplary academic performance in their coursework in the concentration. Congratulations to Jasmine Gibson. Next, the Award for Excellence in Public Health Honors Thesis recognizes at least one graduating public health senior who has demonstrated excellence in the conduct of their honors thesis research. Congratulations to Anuva Goel and Thane Nuna. Next, Excellence in Community Service recognizes a graduating public health senior who has demonstrated a commitment to building community beyond the School of Public Health walls and Van Wickle Gates. Congratulations to Mariel Ellie Rogoff. <laughs> Next, Excellence in Service to Brown and or the Brown School of Public Health recognizes a graduating public health senior who has served as a leader within the school and or university, working to promote a stronger and better Brown and or Brown School of Public Health community. Congratulations to Hannah Lee. <laughs> Next, the Public Health Diversity and Inclusion Catalyst recognizes a graduating public health senior who has made a notable impact to advance diversity, inclusion, and equity within the School of Public Health, Brown University, or local, city, state, and or broader communities. Congratulations to Jasmine Gibson. Now, the Master's and Doctoral Awards. First, the Public Health Impact Award for Master's Students. This award recognizes up to three exceptional graduating School of Public Health Master's Students for impact in scholarship and or professional contribution. Congratulations to Ana Lucia Espinosa Dice from the AM Biostatistics Program. Next, Yufei Li, from the MPH program. And finally, Enyanum Missy Odun from the MPH program. <laughs> Next is the Public Health Impact Award for the doctoral students. This award recognizes one exceptional graduating School of Public Health doctoral student for impact in scholarship and or professional contribution. Congratulations to Gabriela Silva from the Biostatistics PhD program. Next is the Diversity and Inclusion Catalyst Awards, which recognize exceptional graduating School of Public Health students for impact to advance diversity, inclusion, and equity within the School of Public Health, university, local, city, state, and or broader communities. Congratulations to Gregorio Benitez from the MPH program for the master's award. And for the doctoral programs, Courtney Choi from the Epidemiology PhD program. <laughs> Next is the Community Engaged Public Health Citizen Award. This award recognizes one exceptional graduating master's or doctoral student who has demonstrated a commitment to building community across Providence. Congratulations to Kelsey McKinnon from the MPH program. Next is the Commitment to Service Award. This recognizes one exceptional graduating master's or doctoral student who has served as a leader within the school, working to promote a stronger and better Brown School of Public Health community. Congratulations to Scarlett Burgum from the MPH program. Next is Excellence in Teaching Experiences Award. This recognizes one exceptional doctoral student who completed a teaching assistantship or teaching experience within the last academic year. Nominees need not be graduating students. 
Congratulations to Kira Di Clemente from the Behavioral and Social Health Sciences PhD program. And finally, the inaugural Alumni Impact Award. This award recognizes one exceptional master's or doctoral alumnus making a significant impact on their community and or in their field. I am so pleased to announce our recipient, who is a tireless public health leader in the community and in the nation. Dr. Nicole Alexander Scott, Director of the Rhode Island Department of Health from the MPH program, Class of 2011. Thank you all for your terrific work. Congratulations to all of our talented, dedicated graduates. We are thrilled to help launch you on your paths to becoming leaders in improving population health. It's also a great honor to teach and guide students as they grow into the graduates they are today, or will be this weekend. I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge our distinguished public health faculty who have educated, mentored, and sometimes nudged these graduates to the completion of their degrees. We will end today's program with our video acknowledgement of all of our graduates by program, followed by the acknowledgement of all their teachers and mentors. Thank you all for coming. Thank you to our honored guests and congratulations again to all of the outstanding graduates in the class of 2021. We will be with you in spirit this weekend, cheering your success and wishing you all the best for the future.